Welcome back. 652, 53 degrees, taking a step back in time. We do it every Monday here on Daybreak during Storytime with Aunt Phil. This week, author Laurel Downing Bill takes us back more than 80 years ago to tell us about one aviator's attempt to circle the globe. Pilots today have tools and instruments to help them navigate the skies, but that hasn't always been the case. Back when these planes dotted the skies, aviation looked a lot different, which makes an attempt to circle the globe that much more impressive. And that's what one famous pilot did 81 years ago today. Aviator Wiley Post decided he wanted to fly around the world. Now he had done it under eight hours in 1933, but he wanted to do it again going over Alaska, Siberia, Europe, and Greenland. And his good friend, Will Rogers, was up for an adventure and wanted to go with him. On August 7th, 1935, they left Seattle and they headed north. They landed in Juneau, and then they also landed in Anchorage, Talkeetna, and then visited also the Matanuska Valley. They wanted to see what that new colony was all about. And true to form, Will Rogers left those colonists in stitches as they took off and headed for Fairbanks. But then Post really got itchy. He wanted to get going on his trip. So he chose to take off and head north on a day when the weather was not that great. In fact, the real dense fog they'd been reporting. So one of their dear friends, a pilot Joe Crossan, advised them not to go. But Post really wanted to get moving and Will Rogers said, well, gosh, you know, I trust Post. In fact, Amelia Earhart once told me he was the best flyer she knew. However, they did get lost in the fog once they made it through a mountain pass and got down low to the ground and started looking and spotted ranger herder on the ground. So they were able to ask that herder for directions. <laughs> did yes. that help them? <laughs> they landed on a lagoon and waded over to him and asked him, where's Barrow? And the native told them that it was only 12 miles away. Not far. And so despite the weather, they said, hey, let's go got back in the plane, took off, but ran into some problems. Yeah, um, up in the air, they got about 500 feet, and then all of a sudden the air engine stopped, and the plane took a nose dive and went like a rocket right back into the lagoon and flipped over with three feet of water covering the fuselage and the engine. So the poor native fellow, his name was Claire Okpia, could not believe his eyes. He was just shocked. And so he ran like crazy 12 miles to Barrow to try and get help. But that didn't help because once they arrived at three in the morning, they found the two men had already passed away. In fact, the airport in Barrow now is named for both Post and Rogers, and the memorial states that they were goodwill ambassadors and they ended their life's flight there on August 15, 1935. Barrow's airport named after these two guys, but Barrow also shares something now with Oklahoma. The stone that was used for the memorial in Barrow came from the same rock quarry as the stone for the memorial in Claremore, Oklahoma, which was Will Rogers' hometown. So yes, the two are now connected forever. There you have it, and behind us in that interview, the Red Plane. It carries the story of its own. The famed pilot Joe Cross, and he was friends with Wiley Post, he used the 1928 Stearman to carry serum for people in the villages Barrow, Point mm -hmm. Lay, and Wainwright who were suffering from diphtheria. And it was also the first plane to land on Denali at the base camp there. Wow. And so you can learn more about these stories and Wiley Post and his aviation, uh, his impact on Alaska at the museum, which is open every day of the week, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. That, uh, that is one of my... Uh more favorites, for lack of better grammar. Uh, story times, I think. That was a very cool story. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew?